results. Um, the, the weight had just slowly crept up over years. And so, you know, I was really active as a kid, but then just as life happens, weight happens and I had gained weight and it was, gee, about three years ago now that my wife sat me down and she doesn't do this. She said, we need to have a talk, you know, and that means you're in trouble or, or <laughs> you're going to be in trouble. And so yeah. she sat me down, we put the kids to bed and she, she just said, I'm, I'm really nervous. Um, I don't want you to die. You're, you're to the size now where this is where people have high heart attacks and, and get osteoporosis and, and diabetes and things like that. And she said, I don't want to be a single mom with four kids. And, and she said, you know, she wasn't nagging. She just came from a place of love and said, I'm really worried about you. Can we just talk about it? And of mm. course, we had talked about my weight for years because I, I'd been obese for over a decade. Um, but it had just gotten in the last few years, it had gotten a little more. I We went through a, a big move. I changed my career a little bit. And with that added stress, I packed on a few more pounds and she said, we, we just need to make a change. So that was really the impetus for me is having that sit down with her, realizing how much it she cared about me. Yeah, that's that, beautiful. that was really it. I, I had always tried, you know, I'd, I'd done things to try to lose weight. I've always been relatively active, even at 280 pounds, I had run a marathon, you know, so I was doing things. That's um, but what, after after that talk, then I really committed myself to it. And it didn't happen right away. In fact, the first sure. six months, I gained another 10, 15 pounds. Mm -hmm. But I was I was actively trying at that part. Exactly. So you had the so you had the moment the the moment of okay from here on out I'm going to start and you're actually make putting it in, into your priority list. Um, yeah. So that's that's awesome. And, and and hats off to your wife too for uh, you know for being being able to and you too because you have a, a lot of times people would have would I would I would probably feel like my wife was attacking me or something you know when it, and uh, so it's good for us to learn from that too. Well. And I think that's an important part of the story is I knew she wasn't attacking me because this wasn't a regular thing. She, yeah. she sat me down in a way that she doesn't nag. She, she doesn't ride me about things. And so when she sat me down, I knew it was really serious and really important to her. And I think that's why the talk was so effective is because it's not something that was happening over and over. It was different. Right. Yeah, well, that's great. I'm going to take notes about that myself because uh, I think a lot of us can, can, you, can use that within our marriages when with right. certain certain areas that uh, we might we might have well um well tyler let's um with regards to to the weight loss and you mentioned you were all you were doing a mar you had done marathons 280 to, and so did you start to think at some point i mean before your wife sat you down and you had that talk did you ever think you know well, what's you know did, did there was something wrong with like, I mean, a lot of customers of mine, they'll say, oh, I felt like something was wrong with me. It's my metabolism or it was my genetics, my family history, you know, because if I can run, do that much exercise, which everyone says, oh, do the exercise, you lose the weight. Did you ever, what did you, how did you feel about that beforehand? Yeah, I, I did think, um, and I don't know if I ever verbalized this or talked to anyone about this, but I, I thought, you know, other people gain a lot of weight because they have issues with their kidneys or with this or that. And I was like, there's probably something with me, but I was never diabetic or even pre-diabetic. Um, I was relatively healthy, I think because I was still active and actually I ate pretty healthy foods. I just ate a lot of it. Okay. And so, so my cholesterol wasn't really bad. Um, and so a lot of my health metrics were pretty good, especially considering how obese I was. I was class right. three obese, which is morbid obesity. It's as bad as it gets. Yeah. But I was still doing a lot of healthy things in my life. And so I thought there must be something wrong with me because I'm doing all the right things, but I'm 300 pounds. Right, right. And so, and do you have an idea of, of what your carb intake might have been and on, on an average day before you? Honestly, I have no clue. I've never counted never my calories. Done. And yeah. you know, I've I've gone through the math sometimes, and and I know what my resting, you know, caloric rate yeah, is. Yeah, based on like that metabolic rate. Like, yeah. But I have I have no idea what my daily intake was. It was a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's well, it's so easy, you know. It's it's so easy today. We live in an obesogenic environment where if you even eating the foods that the government says are healthy, you know, is going to induce a high 
level of, of overweight and obesity as we could see in our population. You know, I mean, there's, there's something like 70 to 80 percent of the of the food in the supermarket has sugar in it, you know, or of some mm -hmm. form or fashion, maybe disguised in, with some clever marketing words that they use. Um, you know, I mean, they're feeding, they, they, they're trying to teach, to get us to, to, feed, to feed our children dessert for breakfast, you know, and, and many of us unknowingly do it, you know. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's, let's go back to your story. Uh, so what would you say would be the, if you could go back and go back 10 years or so uh, and talk to yourself, what would you tell Tyler Christensen um, with regards to health and fitness and weight? I think the biggest thing is to to keep a a, a long term plan in mind. I think with weight loss and with weight gain, we think about about the day to day and the week to week swings. You know, if I, if I just today's Halloween, so if I eat right. candy tonight, I'm going to gain three, four, five pounds, right? Because mm -hmm. candy is delicious, and I'm going to eat tons of it. And I think before. I would give up because I'd have a few days, bad days in a row. I'd gain five or six pounds and I'd be like, well, it's not working and get despondent. But with both weight loss and with weight gain, it's a long-term play and it's mm -hmm. about establishing good habits. And, and you might have bad days, you might have bad weeks, you might have bad months. But if you have the right trajectory, in the long run, it's going to pay off for you. And I just wish I had that mindset 10 years ago because I, there were lots of times where I would try, I'd, gain, I'd train for a race, for example, and I'd lose 10 or 15 pounds while I trained for the race, but then I'd overeat to overcompensate. I was hungry all the time from training, sure, so I'd sure. overeat and I'd gain more weight, and, that, and then I would just be like, it's not working, and I'd, I'd quit trying for periods of time. And, you know, I think you need to take a long-term look at that and just say, you know, it's the little things over time that matter. Yeah, that's such a great message. I think in, in so many areas, and we we do have such a kind of an instant gratification, um, you know, energy in our society today that I think it's I think it just sets us up for us. I, I see a parallel with with especially now since I'm re, you know going I've gone back to to, to ground zero with business, um, and I told you that story earlier. Since our travel business is shut down right now. And, uh, but it's, it's a blessing in disguise because I get to have more time now to do what I'm really passionate about and talk to people like you and, and help people with our coaching. And, uh, and so I use a parallel though, that if you start a business and you think, oh, I'm going to make, you know, I'm going to make a million dollars this year, you know, I'm going to, and, and you can find all these videos of people saying, oh yeah, this is how you make a million dollars this year. And I see that as sort of like, this is how you, you know, lose a hundred pounds in a month or, or in three months or something. And and uh, really physiologically and econo both economically, physiologically, those are both pretty much impossible, you know. Right. Uh, it, it's, unless you do something, I remember I saw um, a presentation many years ago, I was at a fitness conference, uh, health, it was American College of Sports Medicine, actually a very science-based organization, and they had, uh, they had a doctor that was doing uh, obesity medicine, and he started off his presentation by reaching into a bag uh, or a box or something. You couldn't see what it was. It was a great theatrical thing, though. And he said, okay, everybody want to know the secret to instantly losing 30 pounds. And I can guarantee you, and you just, and I, no way you can fail. And he's like, okay, you ready? All right, let me get volunteers. You guys come up on the stage. So we get five people up on the stage. And then he reached in the box, and it, and it pulls the chainsaw out. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, okay, with this chainsaw, all we need to do is decide if we cut off the right leg or the left leg. Which one do you prefer? <laughs> anyway, it was a great way for, to, 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 uh, to, get, uh, to draw attention to the idea that, uh, you know, really our weight, as we know, it's, it's, it's our bones, our water, it's fluids, it's muscles, it's all these things. And so, uh, so anyway, um, did you ever get into body composition, um, doing body fat measurements, anything like that? Yeah, I think that's a much more helpful measurement than weight. Um, in fact, last year I gained 30 pounds and I was frustrated because I, I, I'm still over 200 pounds. I want to get down under 200 pounds. And I was so frustrated as the year progressed and I kept trying and I was working hard in exercise. I started lifting weights and I was doing what I thought were all the right things. And I gained 30 pounds. And then, but then I looked at the end of the, that period of time and I had lost another 5% of body fat. Wow, so which you of gained course muscle. Means I had gained over 30 pounds of muscle. Wow. And so I was doing the right things. Yeah. Um, but, 
Yeah, you look very healthy. But body fat's a much more important metric to me. So I started at 40% when I was over 300 pounds, and I'm down to, I'm right now at around 16%. 16, which is a very nice, healthy level. And uh, yeah, well, hats off to you for, for that. And, and also for, for maintaining it, you know, because uh, I, sometimes I've thought that really we don't have a weight loss problem. We have a weight, we have a, you know, maintenance problem because uh, it's really not that hard to right. like, reduce the calories short term for a lot of people, but then it's just so hard to keep those habits. And a lot of times, a lot of times I think it's more about the, like I try to teach people, and I think you probably, I'm sure you've already done this. Do you think more about, do you think it's more valuable to focus on habits or focus on the outcome? Well, I think you have to do both. Of course, habits are more important. Um, but have being able to visualize and think about an outcome. I mean, that's how we have success with goal setting is, is mm-hmm. being able to visualize. So I think you do need to have both, but it's the habits that get you there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And Tyler, would you have a, do you have a quote that you maybe have that you maybe think about a lot or, or, or maybe a quote that, uh, that's, that's important to you that, that comes to mind? Um, I'm not a huge quote person, but I do like Aristotle has been attributed by saying, uh, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence uh-huh. then is not an act, but a habit. And so we're yeah. just talking about habits here. Yeah. I, I believe in that, that if you yeah. want to be excellent, it's, it's the compound interest of what you're doing over time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's super important. Um, I've got a, a gentleman right now who's got the, the opposite kind, the opposite goal. His goal is actually to gain 20 pounds. He's always been really skinny and right. his kids are now bigger than him. And, uh, and, and his kids are 14 and 15 and he's like, Oh my gosh, I really need to, to muscle up. And, and uh, his wife's like, yes, great, please do it. You know? And so what we're focusing on him is just small gains. You know, we're looking at increase the strength. You increase, as you increase strength, you increase muscle mass, metabolism goes up you know, and, and you probably notice that for yourself. And that's, and it's like, um, you know, that muscle is get it's like extra, you get extra calorie burns burning while you're sleeping. You know, it's just, a, it's a, it's a very beneficial thing. So Tyler, here's a, here's another question for you. Um, if you, as you look back, when have you had any failures that that set you up for success? Um, yeah, maybe not in the traditional sense. So when it comes to weight loss or, or when it comes to my professional goals and things, um, I've had tons of failures along the way. Obviously, with, with the weight gain, there were lots of things I tried along the way that failed. And even after I had that talk with my wife, I would, I would set up these mini challenges where I would go three weeks and I would try, for example, not eating bread for three weeks or no sugar for three weeks or no dairy for three weeks. And some of those um, worked and I lost weight and others made me gain weight. So some of those didn't work at all. But what happened is in the process of going through that and experimenting Mm -hmm. is I learned how to pay closer attention to how I felt and what my body was experiencing, how I was reacting to things. So all those failures that I experienced for several months, and I'm still doing that, I'm still doing experiments all the time. But now I can pay attention to how I feel, how my body's reacting to things. And that has made a huge difference because now I can quit eating when I'm full. I, like I didn't know when I was full before. I was hungry all the time. But yeah. now I can pay attention to some of those things. And so, yeah, a lot of those failures um, worked. But, but the same thing applies to the rest of my life. In business, you know, starting a podcast or a YouTube channel my first 15 failed, you know, and yeah. I learned how to do it the wrong way and learn little things along the way. So I think that's the message here is learn through your failures, keep failing forward and, and you'll be in good shape. Yeah. Yeah. Great message. Great message. It's uh, it's not, uh, it's nobody does it right. Everything right the first time. And uh, so that's, a, that's awesome. We keep iterating, we keep learning, we keep getting better. And uh so I'm trying to also teach my son just to um, to work on his to work on his strengths and and uh, you know like he's having difficulty spelling and he's of course he's and he's he is but he's totally bilingual lingual, as far as his ears and his and his ability to talk but mm-hmm. you know the spelling is confusing with the two language with the two alphabets and so I'm like sure. you know I'm not really worried about it uh, right now but. Um, Going back to, to, to my question list here, 
um, with, you know, with, there are certain things you've learned with your journey through life. Um, what would be something if there, or maybe is there anything that you believe that's true, but you can't prove it? Oh. You're just not sure even within yourself. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of things. I mean, if we look religiously, there, I, I'm a very spiritual person. Mm -hmm. I'm a Christian. And so that yeah, would, that's the sure. thing that comes first to mind is, I, yeah, I believe there's a God. I can't prove it. Right. Um, but he sure has blessed my life, you know. Um, I don't know. That, that I'd have to think about that question. Yeah, that's a, that's a hard question. That's a hard question. I, uh, my wife asked me, and I had this morning, I was going over these with her, and, and, uh, and it was tough. For me. I, I couldn't do that too well either. So, okay, how about this? Um, I know, actually, why don't you tell us about you? This was just before COVID, if I remember correctly from doing my homework. Um, you had, you were, you were, you'd been invited and you were all prepared to do a, TED, a TEDx talk. Is that right? Yeah. Can you share that story with us? Sure. Yeah. So after I lost weight, people started asking me to, to share my message on podcasts and I started doing some high school assemblies and things like that. And I thought I really love speaking. I love being on the stage. And so I actually became proactive with the, the TED world. I, I reached out to a bunch of different um, TED events and asked if, if they were interested in hearing my story on their TED stage. Um, I got accepted for a TED talk. I worked on it. I practiced it, you know, went over it hundreds of times and it was in San Francisco and this was back in March. And right. for, for most people that the week that things shut down, March 13th is the date that most people circle. Well, it was right. already circled on my calendar because that was my TED talk. Oh, was wow. What irony. So, and I had set that up specifically that week because it was my spring break. Um, I, as a teacher, I have very limited time to go speak. Um, I wish I could speak all the time, but I can't because I'm in the classroom. So that week I had arranged to speak at four different schools to do different assemblies. And I was speaking at an education conference. I, I had a talk that I was speaking to, to teachers. And so I was doing some training that week and I had already um, left home. I was at the conference and I had already given one talk and one assembly. And then everything was crazy that week. In fact, while we're at the conference, things started shutting down. I had to check my phone every 20 minutes to see what was happening with school. Um, two of the assemblies that I had scheduled for that, those next few days got canceled. And then the day before I was flying to San Francisco, they called and said, sorry, we're oh. shutting down the event. Um, of course, they were one of the first places to get hit hard here in the United States. So it wasn't a surprise to me, but I was still hopeful that it would happen. Right. And, and they canceled it. It was a youth event and a lot of the kids that were going to speak at it are graduated now from high school. And, and so they canceled it, didn't reschedule or anything. And so I was disappointed, but it was a great learning experience. And I've continued to work towards that TED Talk. So I'm actually in, in talks with two other events right now that I'm hopeful that I'll get on a TED stage. But now it's for a different message. It's what I learned over COVID. So it's been fun to go through that process. And I hope to be on a TED stage here within the next six to 12 months yeah i'm sure you'll be there i'm sure it's got, and i will i'll look forward to to uh, watching that um so tyler um circling back to the to the health and fitness stuff um i know that you you've mentioned in other interviews the that you you noticed a brain boost or maybe a, you yeah. noticed some cognitive enhancement from um and uh tell us about that if you would yeah, so I'm a, my training, I'm not your traditional elementary school teacher. Um, I, I did graduate school first, became a professor, so I was in teacher education, and, and my degrees are in educational psychology. So I'm a okay. learning scientist, and I've always studied um, how our, our brain is impacted by different um, stimuli and, and how, our, how we learn best. So that's what mm -hmm. I'm interested in on, in my research. And so as I lost weight, um, the thing that stood out to me was not only was I feeling better and, and you know getting healthier but I was actually much more productive um, that I was able to write some books I was able to refinish my basement and, and landscape my yard um, I just my productivity was through wow. the roof and I thought I you know I thought I'd be too busy exercising to have time for anything but that wasn't true I was actually getting a lot more done and so my research went in that direction why is it that I can do more now because I'm being healthy and that led me to a huge vein of research on 
how exercise impacts our brain and what it does. And this is common sense, but we just don't talk about it very much. When mm -hmm. you exercise, it's putting more blood in your brain, it's putting more oxygen in your brain. And of course, the result of that would be you have better focus, you have better attention, and it activates different parts of your brain that are connected to your long-term and short-term memory. So if we're exercising regularly, we're learning better. And so I've started in incorporating that into my classroom. We take, so we, other people call these brain breaks, but that's wrong because what's happening is our brain is actually working harder when we exercise. It's getting more blood and oxygen. So mm -hmm. I call them brain boosts. Yeah, um, oh, I love, I love that. I love that idea. There's, so um, to do brain, brain boosts in my classroom, every day after the first hour of math, we dance for five minutes. Then yeah. we do a few other things. Then we take recess for 15 minutes. Then we work for another hour and I'll just have my students do jumping jacks or push-ups. And yeah. we're doing that throughout the day with lots of breaks and their test scores go up, their productivity goes up, they're learning better and they're retaining it better for the year of wow. uh, end of year exams. So, hats, awesome. hats off, hats off to you, high five for that. I love that. And in fact, I would love to, I'd love to have my son's uh, school. They're pretty, they're pretty good, pretty progressive. Um, and they, they at least appear to, they appear open to new ideas, which, which is not always, you know, uh, the case. And, um, but uh, yeah, I love that. So I may refer them to this interview, or especially that excerpt right there. So uh, sure. yeah, you know something else. If you're ever talking, um, have you? You may have. I'm sure you've seen this in the in the literature or the or the, the science. Also, there also there's also something called brain derived neurotropic factor, and mm -hmm. you probably know about that. So you get this boost of endorphins, and you get the boost of uh, of uh, maybe it's um, you get a little bit of adrenaline, you get some dopamine, all these all these feel good hormones that sugar also of course gives us that hit with the dopamine. Um, right. So yeah, it's a healthy way. Yeah, to get actually, that. I just got back right before we hopped on the call. I just did a 10 mile run and awesome. growing up, I always knew about this runner's high that people talk about, but I didn't experience it much. Um, but when you're, you're in relatively good health and you get that runner's high, which just comes from a lot of things hitting at the same time. Um, you feel like you're light. You feel like things are easier. Uh, and that's what I experienced today on my run for several miles. I just felt like things were great. I was able to kick up a notch. My my tenth mile, I did in under eight minutes. So it, wow. it just felt really awesome. good. Awesome! Awesome! Yeah. That that's that's impressive. That's it. Now, are you are are you training for any races uh, currently? No, I, I don't know if there are races right now. With COVID. yeah, that's true. That's true. I'm I'm forgetting. I'm, I'm being overly optimistic, Tyler, because I. I keep thinking, oh yeah, things are going to be back to normal, you know, after Christmas when the vaccine comes. Uh, and <laughs> and I'm not, I don't think it is. Um, uh, I don't think I'd want to try the vaccine either. If you be the guinea pig at this point. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving back to to this story, let's see if we have a have a good question. Well, here's another one. Yeah, um, I also saw one another um, with uh, looking looking at some other interviews of yours that you. Uh, you know, many people would assume when they're eating healthy and getting fit and, and uh, getting in shape and losing weight, that they're going to spend more money on food because healthy food costs more. Um, right. And it can cost more. But what was your experience with that? Yeah, I'm sure. So I've, I've talked about this a number of times. The year that I lost 100 pounds, um, because I gave up a lot of snack foods, that was the big thing. And some of them were healthy foods, bags of carrots, bags of oranges rice cakes, things like that. But there were a lot of things that I thought were healthy, like power bars. Right. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there too. Same way. I used yeah. to think they were healthy. And, and I could eat four or five of those in a day. You know, I just keep them in my glove compartment in my car. So I'd have one on the way to work, one on the way home. I'd have things in my office. And by giving up snack foods and then a lot of, uh, we never eat a lot of fast food, but we got rid of some of that fast food and processed mm -hmm. foods. What happened was I, I paid attention to my food budget and over that year I saved $2,000 and that was buying better, healthier foods, um, more produce, lean meats, you know, more fish in our diet, things like that. So things that are more expensive, but by getting rid of all the crap, I just saved a ton of money. So I took that $2,000 and bought an exercise bike and, and bought ah, some away good for you. and put it into health. It was great. Yeah, good for you. That's a, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yes, as we say, sometimes the best uh, the best uh, improvements start with subtraction. Sometimes, so right. yeah, that's awesome. And and so, uh, what about the two books you wrote? What can you share anything about your books? 
Sure. So I have my third one coming out here in a few weeks, but my first two, I, I write because I want to solve problems. And so the first problem I was solving, I, I kept a blog um, on, it was honestly, it was on college football. So I, uh -huh. I'm interested uh -huh. in football. Yeah. I, I've always oh, been. Oh yeah, I love, I love football. So I, I started a little blog uh, a number of years ago. It has over a million page views now, so it's done okay. Um, but what happened was I started niching down and focusing on recruiting. And as uh -huh. I did that, I had lots of kids, high school kids reaching out to me and saying, how can, can you help me with my recruiting? And so I started I created another website, it's called B1 Recruiting, and it just gives information for kids about the recruiting process, and, mm -hmm. and for a while we were doing profiles and stuff, and I just can't keep up with that now. Sure, yeah, it's full, but, it could be but, full time. <laughs> right, but kids kept asking me questions, and so I, I wrote, my first book was just a short book on how to contact college coaches, and okay. so it was just to answer a question for them. My second book, again, answered a question. As a school teacher, one of the things that I do is I get um, products sent to me um, that I want to give to my students. We have auctions in our classroom. Yeah. And so we'll have an auction. In fact, we just had one a few weeks ago and kids got um, remote control cars. We had a ukulele, we had a skateboard um, and things like that. And the way I got those things, I'm a school teacher, so I obviously don't have a lot of money, is I would have people send them to me and I would just review them on YouTube. Um, and they would let me keep the products. And so I'm nice. getting a shower head this week for finishing our, our bathroom down here. And so we'll get a nice $200 shower head that I get to keep. And then I make a YouTube video. I'll put a, an affiliate link um, on, in the description. And so if someone buys it, I get a kickback for that. Sure. And yeah. I just had a lot of success. In fact, my first year doing online product reviews, I, I made over a thousand dollars. Like I got paid a thousand dollars and I got $10,000 worth of product for free. Wow. And so it, it dramatically improved my quality of life because now I had gifts for every occasion to give away. I had things for my students. And so I wrote a book about that. It's just called how to get free stuff <laughs> with, yeah, with online yeah. product. Yes. Well, I, I, so, I have, I have, I know three or four people who would be interested in that right now. And uh, yeah, it, yeah, it's fun to do. You know, I just went through another wave where I reviewed like 30 things over the last two weeks and, and got paid a few hundred dollars to do it. And it, it was great. So I wrote a book. My next book is finally, I've written a book about my health journey and um, it's called unlocking the power of transformation. And that will be Beautiful. coming out in about a month. So I'm oh, excited. Awesome. To get awesome. I definitely want to get that one. So unlocking the journey of transformation. That's awesome. Okay. Wow. That's, that's amazing. Well, Tyler, I don't want to, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you've been very generous with us, but um, if I, I do want to ask you one, one kind of one question that uh, it's pretty, that's, that's pretty interesting. And that is if you could, um, if you could have one gigantic billboard that would go up in every U S city, what would you, what message would you put out there? <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, I there was another show that had me on and they asked me this question and I thought about it for weeks and I had an answer and I totally can't remember what uh, the answer okay. is. Well, I'll tell you what just barely popped in my mind when you said it this time. Yeah. And what I would put on uh, every billboard is love your wife. Love your wife. Okay. That's love awesome. Give me a high five for that one too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. We've got to especially with uh and and you mentioned you're speaking about um about your you know what you've learned during the lockdown and during covid um so uh, would could you share a, a little bit of a little bit of wisdom there and we can as a as a closing closing message maybe um so i i don't know exactly what you're referring to well anything uh, anything to you know to keep i mean our focus our fo you know we're focusing kind of on health and fitness and and, uh, but also we're focusing on, on balance and happiness and, uh, and, you know, taking care of your family. And that starts at home. I mean, it starts at home with help, with sure. happiness and, uh, and loving, loving the spouse, loving the kids. And, uh, you know, despite the, yeah. the, the challenges. Well, so I'd love to talk about just briefly about my experience. In fact, my daughter's here. She can come tell it. Yeah. yeah. So okay. over the, hello, <laughs> over, I'm Dan. Over the last few months, we, have had a great experience here at home because while everything shut down, that meant we've had more time together. Yes. And what I've realized, I think a lot of people have realized this is how important relationships are often with the people we care about most. 
we, we don't put a premium on that time. And COVID uh, yes. kind of forced us to, to be home more, to teach our children, to do those things. And we found that we loved that time. Um, over this last summer, we didn't go on any family vacations. We're just stuck here the whole time. But we worked on projects together. We did home improvement. That's kind of noisy. Can you not do that? <laughs> <laughs> My son made um, we, we did projects together. We worked on different things. We taught our kids about the stock market and, and uh -huh. they all invested. We, um, they all start their own businesses. Even this one was running around nice. the neighborhood selling things and, and doing different things. So what I found over COVID that I think hopefully will carry to the rest of my life is you don't need money. You don't need fame and, and fortune. You don't need the fancy things in life. You just need to spend time with the people that you care about most. And if you do that, you know, those other things kind of take care of themselves. So yes. I, I've loved this time. Some of it, you know, it's been stressful and certainly work has been harder as a teacher, but COVID has really been an opportunity to, to do the things that matter most. And I, I've appreciated that. Wow. That's, that's a beautiful message, Tyler. So that is a beautiful message. You have a beautiful daughter. I'm sure your whole family is, is, uh, is, is, is great. And that's, uh, I, I would totally agree. I would have the same experience and I'm, I was the one who was not spending enough time before. So this is another Right. Blessing, uh, a blessing that COVID has maybe given to uh, to, to many of us. That uh, it's forced us to slow down and and stop running around like a chicken with their head cut off, like uh, which is which is what I oftentimes used to do. So <laughs> amazing, great. Well, it, it I think well, Tyler, for people that want to reach out, uh, that want to find more about your work, your books, anything else. Um, would you like to, what would be the best way to find you online? Yeah, I'll have my daughter tell you so she can be on, on camera. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> too, too hard for the moment. TylerChristensen.com. That's my hub. Um, and that's where you'll find links to all my other things, my podcast and, and, um, my YouTube channel for, for school assemblies and, and things like that. So awesome. Awesome. Well, that's, that is amazing. So, well, all right. You no, you did great. Ahead. Hey, thank, thank you. Thank you for coming on the podcast. You did really well. And I think you, I think I want you to know that because, uh, you may have an, you'll probably be on a lot of other videos in the future, you know, because we're going to, okay. Okay. Yeah, you did great. You did great. Well, Tyler, that's that's all I've that's all I've got on on my end, and uh, I want to just say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for making time for us and sharing your story and uh, and your wisdom. And uh, I'm super excited to hear to see your new book coming out about your transformation. And I think of um, we can we'll be happy to help you promote that in any way we can. Perfect. Well, it's been my pleasure, Dan. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for the little interruption here with my munchkin here at the end. Oh, no, um, no problem. Love to have her with us. Appreciate no it. problem. That's that's. Hey, this is real life. This is real life. This is uh. This is not. We're not. Uh, we're not in a bubble in the in the studio. This is real life, and this is what we, what it's all about. So anyway, lots of uh. Yeah. Great to see you. Great to see that. All right. Well, listen. Uh, we'll be in touch. And once again, anyone who wants to find Tyler, TylerChristensen.com. Um, he's a multi-talented guy, a man of wisdom, and uh, and uh, we're looking forward to that new book, Tyler. So we'll be in touch. Thanks. He's okay. I'm a lovely singer, so. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't my again. Okay.